And now, at long last, as promised, let's take a look at the Dublin Core DTD. And the Dublin Core DTD is declared in this document here. And first thing you should notice, of course, is that at the top, this is pretty standard stuff. You get a big comment block which provides some introductory materials, credits, and whatnot for the DTD. Then you get a declaration of two namespaces, RDF and DC. So the Dublin Core namespace declaration is again a PURL, a persistent URL, and that persistent URL refers to this document, which we have already looked at, the DCMI metadata terms document, which provides some explanation of the metadata elements and the long list of terms that we looked at in the previous unit. And the declaration of the RDF namespace refers to that URL, which is a document that we have also already looked at, the document 22RDF syntax NS. And this is the document that is the namespace for RDF that's used standard in all of the Dublin Core documents that we have looked at so far. And I'll leave this up on the screen for the moment because we're going to refer back to it in just a moment. First thing we have is the wrapper element. The wrapper element RDF colon RDF. And the wrapper element is the top level element in an RDF document. So RDF colon RDF is being declared here as the top level RDF element in any document, in any Dublin Core document that uses RDF. And notice in this document here that RDF colon RDF is in fact the top level document here as well. The wrapper element RDF RDF has the child RDF colon description, which is declared down here, the resource description container element, the element RDF description has the child DCMES, Dublin Core Metadata Element Set, of course, and then the entity DCMES is declared here with the set of attributes DC colon title, DC colon creator, DC colon subject, etc. All 15 elements are attributes of the entity DCMES. Then, if we scroll down a bit, we see the elements from DCMES 1.1 and everything from here down are declarations of those 15 Dublin Core elements. And you'll notice that these are all structured the same. Element, name, PC data, and then two attribute lists, right? Element, name, PC data, and then two attribute lists. All of these are, are structured exactly the same way. So all 15 elements. What we're looking at here is the declaration of how to interpret each Dublin Core element in turn. And we'll look at title because it's at the top of the list and is convenient. So we have the element DC title, which requires the data type PC data, which 
as I said before, is parsed character data. It's a string of characters of one sort or another. Uh, then we have two at lists, attribute lists, or DC title. First one is XML lang, which as you might expect is short for language. That is a special attribute that's built into XML that allows you to specify language. That's fairly obvious. Uh, C data is character data. Again, it's a, it's a block of text and implied means that a value must be provided if you use that element. Now, implied means that that element is not required, but if you do use the title element, for example, then you must provide a value for it. Then you get another attribute list, RDF resource. Again, see data implied. RDF resource is a resource with a URI, basically referring to another resource out there on the web somewhere, not just any string of characters, for example, a narrative description. So what we have here, allow me to scroll back up to the top, what we have here is a declaration of the namespaces that are being referred to by this DTD, we have a declaration of all 15 elements, and then we have declarations of each of the 15 elements in turn and the attributes of those 15 elements. Now, obviously there is a lot here that refers to RDF, and we've been working our way up to RDF for some time now. So let's finally go there. 